How are we doing folks? So uh, moving on from the four gaiters, when I was going to put the wheel back, um, this is very sticky, as if the grease on the spindles uh, has gone hard. So I'm going to pull it apart and have a look, and while I'm in there, I well look with the wheel bearings and see how they're doing, maybe wash the grease out repack them, inspect them, whatever. So, um, drum off first. So even though similar to the BSA, the BSA one, instead of having a castellated nut, it has the um, disc with the two holes drilled in it, but I know the wheels are exactly the same, because I've just put the B25 front wheel in the Daytona just so I could move it and it fits in perfectly. So uh, same wheel but maybe a few changes. So this off first. So it's a deep series socket and it is inch and an eighth across the flats. And it's a conventional thread so it's lefty loosey he said, Jesus, how do you tell you? It's in soft jaws by the way, the spindle. Bloody hell, that is tight. Tight, tight. Don't need to have it that tight. And uh, unfortunately, the animals have been in there beforehand. If you've not got a spanner, use a chisel. Right, okay. So this should now lift off. Yay. So it's a bit manky, but uh, just wants a good clean break shoes look. Oh, I've got grease. Obviously, it's been lubric, been pumped with grease, over greased. So I've got grease on the end of that shoe. That one's okay, but yeah, it wants a good, a good clean anyway. So that out of the way for the moment. And uh, that doesn't look good. Um, that should be flush in there, shouldn't it? It's obviously come loose or something. So here's my special tool, whatever. So uh, this is a lefty, isn't it? So um, unless it's been cross-threaded. I know it seems, but that, that should go all the way down that, nearly flush with the top of the casting so something's not right there, I'm not really sure what that would be. Threads look okay. But the bearing should be a lot further in that way, shouldn't it? Uh, not sure what's going on there. Anyway, let's uh, spin her over. Soft jaws. Skirt clip. Just looking at that now. And it looks like 
the shaft. There's three steps on this, I think. This diameter, a slightly bigger diameter, and then the size where the bearing fits. And that is all peeled up there. So that is could be why that bearing isn't sitting down. Maybe. I've got my glasses on, watch my eyes. No. I'll just put, uh, I know they're not safety glasses, but they're going to do something. Be tight. We're out. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all bulged up on one side there. That is why that bearing isn't all the way back. It's against the shoulder there. I'm not sure if you can catch that. But you can see on this side there how it's gone over that second diameter no problem as it should but when I spin it round to here it's obviously hit and that's why that shaft hasn't come through so uh, let's keep going anyway so I'm just gonna now gently drift that bearing out with a copper face or drift the shaft out with a copper face so let's uh If I come this way first, it should bring that, it'll bring the shaft and that bearing out. So, what should happen with this is This steel retainer should sit on that ledge. The bearing goes in and then this die-cast Samac left-handed thread thing screws in and constrains the bearing in that spot. And it's obviously not got there, has it? For whatever reason. So now I'm going to use and take the bearing off here and I'm going to use this shaft to push the bearing out. So if I just gently, it's a bit mucky. Them bearings. But now, if I put this back in this way, I should be able to bring that bearing out against that shoulder using this shaft.
So there's that. I've definitely been to Mars and back that dust cover. Might not be able to straighten that. Can't even get it off the shaft. That should just slide over there. So, uh, definitely the issue. Second bearing and shaft. And then what we should be left with is just the inner dust cover, which we are. So that's all stripped out. So I can stay there for a tad. And let's have a look. So they'll be, and they are, 9 sixteenths. If I just get an adjustable spanner to hold that. There are pliers. Take the split pin out. So I'll just take one split pin out. Okay, we're free. <coughs> I'm just choking, gulping the tea. Excuse me. Tight. Gotcha. Just leave that for a second and get the other one off. I don't want to. The problem what people do is they they drift these out. These are very tight on here, and this is for those uh, manual grease guns, the plunger type, and you damage <coughs> the uh, ends. So I don't want to do that. So let's get the other nut off. So there's no washer on that one, but there, there should be a washer on there, the same as, same as that one. Because it allows the square to be pulled through, and they're specials, so I haven't got one of them. 
So it's definitely been apart before. <coughs> oh yeah, that one's really tight. I'm just going to mark these because I want them to go back in the same place. <clears throat> Plenty of meat on them. And a few spiders, and a spider's, and a spider's nest. <laughs> but that one, unfortunately, is. Uh, I mean, it might come out with the um, brake cleaner. Give it a shot. <clears throat> so I'll have to drift th those off. Because you can't get underneath that one. I'll be able to get a little puller under that one. That one's not too bad, but that one is very, very sticky. So, I'm going to strip everything off, wash everything, wash the bearings, then when they're washed, airline them off, see if they're worn. And I'll have to try and do something with that. I mean, it might be recoverable, but and a dragonfly probably have those in stock. So um, we'll catch you in a short while after we've cleaned everything up. Okay, folks, we're uh, all cleaned off. Um, I've solved the reason why and it was definitely this rear dust shield which I have managed to uh, by using a couple of sockets tapping one inside another folding the flange back inside but it looks like the left hand bearing has been installed first and I normally put the right hand bearing in first because that's the one which goes up against the register and it's clamped into position and that's the one that gives the datum for all the lengths because that's the only fixed point whereas the left hand side one is a floating bearing not floating in the, that respect that it moves anywhere but it finds its place after the register so it should be this one first so it's hard to see but there is actually there's actually three diameters there that's the bearing fit diameter, that's the dust shield and that's obviously where the um, the bottom of the slider clamp goes and that had hooked up on the back of that first diameter and that's why that was further this way forward in the hub but the problem that it's caused is if you look at the because this was then never allowed to go all the way into the drum what it's done is I should be able to pick that up you've got like this two millimeter ridge where the shoes have never actually been in the drum so um, I'm just going to try and just linish that edge 
because the shoes have come good. I've managed to get the grease out of them with um, where they've been the shafts had been over greased um, with some brake cleaners so they're, they're lovely and dry as they should be. Uh, bearings are good um, and these are probably the original bearings because I didn't even know this company was still in existence but um, Fefner bearings I think they're Timkin later on and yeah I know they had a production place in um, Northern Ireland but you know the bearings are good the only disappointing bit with the bearings is you're only reliant on the um, this to keep them. You know, I'm going to repack them. Obviously, you're only reliant on that to keep the moisture out. So you're, not that you're going to go wading in the bike, but if you went through any depth of water where it come up anywhere near the centre line of the hub then obviously the water can actually get in. So you generally fit, um, R, they're called R2 aren't they? R2 bearings. So they've got like a, I think it's Viton, a Viton seal either side. What I generally do is flick the Viton seal out of the side which is open to atmosphere if you like, but the innards which can never get water because you've got a you know, bearing fit on the outer and a bearing fit on the inner, you can over grease them a bit on the inside. But let me just clean the shoes up first. I'll repack these and have another, another thing because I've got, I think I've got another three bearings on order because obviously now I've seen this, I'll have to have a look at the back, the back wheel if that's been apart because obviously there's a chance if whoever's had the front apart has had the back shaft out of the wheel as well that might be not assembled correctly so just looking back at the other stuff so the the cams the shafts were good there's hardly any wear on the shafts so very very little use but the grease had gone rock hard and that these were really tight you know these are lovely now So they're better, I'll probably just put copper slip on these going back. So they're all good. Uh, obviously the wheel's fine. So what I'll do next is I'm just going to see if I can, if I can dress this ridge off these shoes without taking anything away from them. Which, you know, I don't think I'm going to do any harm could only be an improvement but I don't think I mean that they're not even worn into there yet that's that area has never been touched has it but it's let me linish or dress that edge and if I'm happy then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll build the drum and we'll and if I'm going to stay with open bearings and not the R2s then uh, we'll carry on and build it so we'll be back soon. Okay, the edges of the shoes are dressed up fine. So no worries there. Bearings are greased so we're ready to go. So just this makes life a tad easier. It's just a uh, and I'm 16 bolt. Just something for the drum to rest on, like so. So we're just going to put a little bit of copper slip on the shafts.
like so. Drop the shafts in so it, I do like to put everything back as it came out. So I did, even though these are the same, I have got a mark. So that one is that one. And that one is the other one. So the rounded edges of the cams face to the top. So they're in. So we can just drop this on here now. And we'll just clamp it if I can find where to put the nut bolts there is. And a 24. Yep. So now for the uh, lever arms. So we don't forget to pull the spring on first. Never done that before. Oh yes, you have. <laughs> and these are a really tight fit on the square. So that's the pull for that, isn't it? going that way so that's going to be there it's a bit awkward fighting with the spring but we're on and just get it started and I did find uh, these washers these are special washers they're quite thick because when you pull these down, the square actually protrudes beyond the surface of the um, of the actuator. And what you want, you want to clamp this against the back face and not have it, you know, loose on the square. So uh, that's hence the thick washers, and the and one was obviously missing, wasn't it? So these are UN. UNF, these will be 3.8 UNF. So you just got to make sure that you keep the washer central so it pulls the square up beyond the surface. I can feel it going quite nicely. Now it's going tight and it's we're definitely there. So I'll be happy with that and what a difference. We didn't have that before. So same with the other and obviously facing up. Just got to get the cam in the right place which it is. <coughs> so that is going to be obviously there to meet that yep there's our thick washer that I luckily found which is big enough to go over the square if we can get it back off it's got to clear the square because that square is going to protrude beyond the surface of this. So you've got to find that sweet spot where it sits 
to be able to pull it through. You can, I can feel it pulling into the taper. And then, sorry, not the taper, but I can feel the square pulling through, and that is nice. Happy with that. Yeah. Okay, that's that side done. Let's spin him over. There we go, 24 mil. Don't want to get any copper slip on my brake shoes. I'll just throw the springs on first. So I'm never really sure whether the spring end should face up or down. Don't really care, but uh, and I generally put one pair, one spring going one way and one spring going the other, rightly or wrongly. So I've got to get these the right way round. They only go on one way anyway. Okay, springs are on. So we just need to put a bit of copper slip on these faces. So obviously this is the sliding surface off the cam. Only a bit, not too much. And the slippers go on and they the ledge of the slipper goes to the back the steel slippers and again a little bit of silubrication on the faces because obviously they do move on these, so they've got to slip across the surface. And I can just put a tad more on there. Because we can. And now it's time to trap our fingers. So the right way up, so if you remember I did mark these so they go back in the same place. So I'm going to put the top one on first. And now I'm going to uh, trap my fingers. So one, two, three, go, he said. And we're on.
all good. So that'll do for the drum, so that can come out. And now we're ready for the wheel. So we're going to put the fixed or the datum side bearing in first so let's move you up a tad for that so the first thing that goes in see we've got a register in here is this the inner backing for that fixed bearing or the, the datum bearing that slides in and goes up against that ledge and it's in then one of our bearings bearing in mind and what I have is I think it's an inch and a quarter or inch and five sixteenths It's an, it's an inch and a quarter socket um, and because you want to be knocking on the outside of the bearing and it should just drift in quite nicely until you hear the tone change so we definitely bottomed out there. And now we've got our left-handed thread Zamac materialed um, retainer, which is a lefty. And I have cleaned this up so it should go on and it should go flush. When it goes flush, we know we've made it. Okay, I'm just going to... Don't have to go mad with these, obviously. That's all that needs. So now that's flush and that's where it should have been when we opened it up. So next is the shaft is going to go in from the other side. So I'm going to have to do this down below. I'm just going to put a little bit of jungle juice on there as assistance. A little bit on the threads because we can and I'm just going to put a smear in the centre just to stop it rusting, you know obviously humidity is going to get in there anyway. And that through I was going to say the dust shield but if I put the dust shield down the, there's a dust shield 
from the other side and I think it's still in the, the other paraffin tray so just let me retrieve that first and uh, give it a wipe because that goes in after so one sec found it it was in the bottom of the uh, the other paraffin tray and the only difference is between these two obviously the same OD but the one with the rolled edge the one that gave us the trouble is on the outside and this one goes on the inside because this one is a bigger got a bigger diameter that's going to go in that way and it's just like I don't know another retainer to keep the grease close to the seal or something maybe so we're ready to rock with this again sorry so back so in this way this time and this should go in very easily bottomed out it's the good sound let's get a shot of the excess grease and I'm going to bring it back up now so I'll have to move you back a bit because we're back in the vise to put the other bearing in so let's just shove you here so on that enough so the shaft will go in through and I may as well we don't need, we don't need the soft jaws yet do we yes we do because the threads are going to be poking out on that side aren't they? Okay. This is this way up. So I don't need to go mad tightening it. So there's our dust shield that way up with the, the dish facing outwards on, on the inner one I just have to get that started and then we've got our silubricated bearing socket which just hits on the outer race she's away nicely now this can go got to go deep enough for the other dust seal to go in but also there is a stop or another register on the um, and I think that's it on the shaft so it can only go in so far anyway but this bearing isn't constrained in that fact it can only go so far in that direction because there's a slightly bigger step uh, on the shaft and it can't come back out this way because once you put that dust shield in um, we've got our circlip that goes behind it so I could shove a little bit more grease in there because we can
There we go. Now this will go over that second diameter, he said. Again with my socket. And we're in. Bottomed out, solid. So now we've got our skirt clip. And again, I've, I've got my glasses on this time. So there you go. Glasses on fitting a skirt clip in case it flicks off in your eye. Can't remember which ones we used circlip wise, I think it was these. I mean that the holes in these are teeny, you know, compared to what you find today in most stuff. So you need some really fine pointed circlip pliers for a lot of BSA, old BSA and Triumph stuff. Come on baby, you can go. There you go. And we're in. So, that's that side is done. So now we have to spin it. It's a heavy old wheel this <laughs> and I've now got to grip it a tad on the soft jaws of course because when we hopefully the drum's going to go on <laughs> we've got to pull down on there haven't we and we fit the nut So here's our assembled So the shoes are going to be want to be shifted around a bit And that's probably not been that far in for a long time because so obviously we were at least two and a half, three millimetres out that way, weren't we? So I've cleaned up the nut. Unfortunately, uh, I've filed away some of the uh, cadmium or zinc plate or whatever's on there. And that now has gone down. We've not even put the spanner on it. Yeah, but that's gone flush to the top of the threads. So I think that was... Can't remember. Um, was it inch and an eighth deep series socket? Yes. Strong arm. So that now we're pulling this inside of this alloy back plate the nose or the snub is passing through that Mizak in a bearing retainer past that and now it leans against the inner race of the bearing the right hand bearing which is sat in the register and you don't have to go ballistic with this and that'll do it And uh, obviously the, the pin 
and I can't go really got to find new split pins for these but this that was something <laughs> it would never do before so I just have to raise it up a little bit if I want to spin it in the vise if I'm strong enough so if it's, it's leaning on the hubcap no I'm not going to be able to lift it up with one hand so I have to bring you out but there we are beauty nice and lovely and free so a couple of new split pins in there anyway because the one cheek snapped off that one anyway and the other thing the other one's only got one leg as well but we're done and uh, I'm not going to mess with the adjustment because the, the shoes have gone back in exactly the same place all I've done is take that edge away which had been left because this was two and a half or three of me like out this way um, and just roll it and see how it feels on the bike first if it doesn't feel right then obviously we'll have a go at uh, pairing the adjustment up but for the moment I don't want to touch it because I think the shoes have actually worn in quite nicely um, into position so there we go and that is ready to go <coughs> back into the bike so uh, the next one's going to be the, the carbs um, I did pull the carbs off yesterday and they're in a bit of a mess there's been water in there and all kinds of stuff so um, the next one will be stripping the carbs and uh, pulling the jets out, giving everything a good clean and see what we need to replace and see what's good and what can stay. So we will catch you on the next one.